This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Sean Preston. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today, we have a stud neighbor on with us. That is Dan (laughs) Brom from Two Men in a Truck. We've all seen his trucks out there in the city. Finally get an opportunity to have a chat with the man, the myth, the legend himself. What's going on? (laughs) That's overkill. (laughs) (laughs) That would make you feel a little special coming on the show. (laughs) Thank you very much, Sean. Nice to be here. So I'm super happy to have you on board. Super happy to get to get to know you a little bit. Um, I've been curious. I've been waiting for you to come on the show. Uh, so why don't we dive right into it? Why don't you tell us a little bit about your business? Uh, well, I guess two man truck kind of speaks for itself. We're in the residential and uh, commercial or business moving moving business. Uh, we opened up here in Barrie as two men in a truck in June of 2010, actually. So we're almost 14 years ago, very close to 14 years ago. Um, and it's been quite a ride. Open up with a couple of trucks and a couple of movers, really two or three guys. And today we're, we moved 10 trucks and got about 35 movers and a wonderful office staff. And, uh, um, yeah. Well, that's great. I once sat down with an insulation guy and I'm like, so tell me, man, tell me about insulation. He goes, it's insulation, man. It's not sexy. <laughs> well, you know, moving, uh, yeah, I don't know that it's a particularly sexy business per se, I suppose, but, um, you know, the ev- almost every customer we deal with is, um, um, they're stressed. Moving is a very stressful event in anybody's life. Uh, it's said to be the third most stressful event in people's lives next to death or marriage breakup kind of comes moving. So even in the best of circumstances, it's a stressful event. People are vulnerable. People are in a place. So uh, our job is to ease that stress, lower that stress by communication, lots of communication leading up to a move, and then delivering a high quality service that they really didn't maybe expect. And when you get off to a real good start to the day, everybody's stress level comes down and things get easier from there. Do you guys do some moves pretty far, like across, uh, you know, would you bring someone all the way out to Alberta or do you guys kind of stick? We have, we have a, uh, we have a container program that can, can move people to other two men and truck franchises in Western Canada, right out to BC now, uh, across all the provinces, actually. Um, we don't take our own trucks out there. We, but we do have the ability to move people there. Uh, our own trucks, we move people in our own trucks anywhere in Ontario and as far as way as uh, New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. Nice, very nice. Yeah. yeah, the vast majority of our moves are within two hours of the Barry area. We call it Barry in central Ontario, so we service a, a large area, really a lot of Simcoe County, most of Simcoe County. Um, but yeah, we're in all extremes. We were in Windsor, Windsor last week and Ottawa the week before. We go up north a lot. Yeah. All over the province. And as far as way is down east, yeah. Very cool. <clears throat> I mean, your local business as well, too. So I would imagine, you know, getting an opportunity to work with you guys, get a little bit more of that kind of like localized, kind of more customer service oriented approach than maybe if they used, you know, some of these big, you know, giant conglomerate, you know, corporate companies that do that kind of nationwide moving type of thing. Yeah. So we have the, I mean, it's just, it's a good, so two minute truck is a franchise moving company, a very high quality franchise moving company. I mean, home office are, I mean, it's a great brand, uh, lots of support from home office, all the IT support that, that comes along with a large franchise moving company or any franchise moving company or, or company. Uh, but we're local to our community. We're owned, each franchise is owned and operated in their community. So we have the benefits of that large company, but we truly do service our community. Very cool. We embody that on the show. We're pretty community yeah. focused there. So I think we align on that quite well. Yeah. So I remember, because I grew up here, uh, so I remember when the trucks first uh, hit uh, hit the road. I was right, yeah. still in high school. 
at the time yeah. and taking the school bus and you kind of see them around you. You know, if you, you pay attention, I like to consider myself kind of a pretty detail oriented kind of guy and remembering some of that stuff and kind of watching you guys do your thing here locally. Everybody's got a bit of a journey, right? Leading up to what they do now. Some people were born with it. They just, they knew that they were going to be a hairdresser or a veterinarian and that's what they did their whole life. And then other times it's a little bit like the Mazda commercial, you know, it's like, right, yeah, 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 place. yeah. so um, I'm curious to ask you, you know, what, what's, what's your journey been leading up to getting into two men in a truck? Uh, well, I grew up in a small little town in the middle of nowhere over in the Kawarthas, if you will, outside of a, an old farm outside of Norland, Minden, Halliburton area. Uh, got a job at the local grocery store. Actually, I'm a, a butcher by trade or meat cutter by trade. Really? Uh, yeah, enjoyed that very much. Worked in the town of Cobacomp for a long time. Lots of people recognize that. And it's a tourist area, touristy area. Uh, so grew up in an old farm, started working grocery store, um, became a licensed meat cutter at the time, and then a meat manager and then a store manager. Uh, enjoyed that was probably about eight years. Uh, that led to an opportunity with Weston Bakeries, but everybody's probably heard of Wonder Bread. You've heard of Wonder Bread. Yeah. Um, so I had the privilege of being a uh, independent distributor. It was a franchise model, but really you're an independent, independent distributor, owner, operator, selling bread for almost 20 years and very much, uh, very much had a great run at that, had a great time, loved it. Uh, it was good to us as a family, and uh, I really enjoyed it. But I was getting older, and things were changing, and the market was kind of changing. And it was just, you know, I was at a point in my life, if I was looking for something I could, you know, scale to some degree and not always have to be the person on the truck, if you will. Uh, so just looking and uh, went to a couple franchise shows. And ran into the two men in the truck people, John Pretty, the president, and Chuck Resnick, the vice president, at a, at a franchise show. And they were fairly new in Canada, the two men in the truck was at the time. And I just stepped back and said, I'm not going to carry any, I'm not into carrying boxes, sort of thing. And and uh, Chuck says, Well, our owners don't carry boxes. And I just stepped away. And anyway, so it was six months later, a year later, still going the franchise shows and looking for what was next. And there they were again, and I stepped in the booth at that point in time and understand understood more about the business. And everything, and if everything I have ever done has always been focused around a customer, so customer service of some sort, including the bread, including the the, the butchering and the, and the grocery store stuff. Um, so the more I learned about it, the better I liked it, and one thing led to another, and we got started. What a cool story, man. I uh, <laughs> always love hearing people's story because they're so unique. They're so different. I uh, love that aspect of the customer service side of you. I feel like I'm the same way. I mean, customer services, when you when you get somebody's business, right, or you give somebody's business and they treat you really well, that does not only wonders to that individual, but to everybody else in their inner circle. And I'm sure you've probably seen the ramifications of treating people well with the growth of your well, business. Well, we truly, yeah, and we truly are in the customer service business. We just happen to move people. And I'm not say, just saying that, that, that's the absolute truth. We track our referral rating, um, you know, two minute drug Barry in central Ontario today. Like every customer gets a customer survey and we want them to, to fill it out and get back to us. We're at actually 98.96% year to date for 2024 of our customers would refer us to friends, family, relative, neighbors. I would love it to be 100%. And if I could ever get it to 100%, I, I would love it. But but I, I mean, it's it's a really, really, really high number and a really important number. Our movers uh, look at that number every day on the way out to their jobs and everybody's focused on it. And yeah. It, it truly is all about the customer without question. No, 100%. That's a <clears throat> extremely high number. Uh, can impress everybody. And not everybody wants to work with everybody either. Uh, sometimes you pick up a client and you didn't know, and all of a sudden you're tiptoeing around eggshells and doing your best. And yeah. it's just, you know, they could be at a point in their life. They're just, you know, like I said, moving is stressful. Oh, yeah. There's a lot going on in people's. It's, yeah. Their, their brain's running in peanut butter by the time, by the time we get there, right? <laughs> yeah. No, 100%. So it, when it comes to moving, you know, moving people, are there any myths or misconceptions when it comes to your line of work? 
Well, I think probably the biggest misconception, I, I suppose, when people search, um, you know, most people search through Google. Um, a lot of our business is repeat and referrals, but there's always new customers out there with a question. Um, and so they search and they're comparing um, whatever they see on their, their Google search. Uh, biggest misconception is there's lots of companies in our region and every other region that don't actually exist here. They do get pinned on the map. They use a residential address. I've kind of figured out the system a little bit and people think they're hiring somebody local. Um, and the fact of the matter is they're not. And um, they think, you know, if, because they have a phone number, you know, there's companies out there that kind of operate off from a cell phone, if you will. Um, no real office, no real place to find them, no real places to buy boxes or packing supplies or come and meet your customer service rep or anything like that. I, you know, just people should probably do a little bit of homework or a little bit more sometimes just to be sure you are dealing with who you think you're dealing with. No, that's great. I mean, you know, you talk about having a high level of customer service, you know, building the business the way it's built and having your own customer service rep, having a place to be able to, you know, buy boxes and moving supplies. Uh, that's an important component to when you are going to move you. Yeah. Uh, these different things that you need to do. And, you know, there are a lot of things that you guys probably supply to people. Uh, I think the movement, there is a big movement. It's existed for the last five, six years, and it's, and it's only growing from here. One of the reasons why we decided to do the show, to give avenues for people to be able to shop more local. I just met, uh, it's turning into be a good friend of mine. I met him at the Barry Chamber Golf Tournament last year. Uh, he owns a company called Just Simcoe. And he's rivaling Amazon. It's a place where you can buy local, it's free delivery, and we're local in Simcoe County. And, uh, you know, people care about that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, to be able to talk about it today and say, hey, there's a lot of people that are not local. You should do your research. You know, that's an important thing. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, in my case, and there's others, there's, there's good companies out there as well. Um, uh, but I live in Springwater Township, not far from Barrie. I do my grocery shopping in Barrie. I do everything we do. Everything I do is in Barrie. So you run into customers all the time. Often I've got a two minute truck shirt on or driving a two minute truck vehicle. So, you know, you're out there and people, you know, the, the name is recognized for sure in the industry and people see our trucks around and our vehicles around. Um, so I don't know. It's just, uh, just nice to be, we definitely, we definitely do our business in the region as well. And, uh, to your point, it's always best to support locally for sure. Yeah. We've got a great, uh, community here of people. Barry's always been that kind of small town vibes. It still is. I think people safeguard that they care a lot about that. Uh, even for the amount of people that are moving here, I think they're kind of to start to see there's a bit of a culture that's here because everybody who's been here for long enough starts to kind of understand that. And our business community here is absolutely phenomenal. Everybody's here to help each other. It's just a wonderful place. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I call Barry a big, small town. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, it does have that. Uh, and it, you know that it's growing like crazy. The region is growing like crazy, but it still has that small town feel. And to your point, the business community is really, uh, really supports each, very really supportive of each other. And that's yeah, a great place, it's a great place to uh, to be, in. and it's a great thing to see as well too. Like we we also live in a, I I've had the privilege of traveling uh, all across Canada. I've been in every major city in Canada uh, through my times of being a, a traveling sales rep at the time when I was in my early twenties. Uh, we have a beautiful country. There's a lot that our country offers, but man, I came back here because it's a gateway to cottage country. We've got the waterfront right here. Uh, it, like you said, that big city, small town vibes and feels, uh, and, and you wouldn't know unless you've had an opportunity to leave and see yeah. the, the other parts of the world or, or other parts of our country, parts of North America. And then you start to really kind of figure it out that we actually do live in a special place yeah without question without question i'm not originally from barry nor did i ever live in barry until i got in the moving business actually lived in western ontario lived in eastern ontario i know a fair bit of the province but uh the first when we first moved close uh was in hillsdale which is out in springwater township as well 
um, and just the whole region. I, it's just a wonderful place to live. It just is. Yeah, I was born in Winnipeg. I'm heading back out there on the weekend. We got a wedding to go see. Nice. And love it. Great family. The whole the whole bit. Everything about that part is great, but a little flat, a little cold. <laughs> so. <laughs> Very good. I'm a, uh, I'm a big kind of uh, work balance, work life kind of harmony. I wouldn't use the word balance because it's not really a balance is when it's perfectly even and we tend to work a little bit more than we do like to have fun. But uh, I do like to make sure you kind of have that that harmony and, and working hard and working on your business and in your business. But then also there's a time to shut that down and, and, and spend time with friends and family and do, do hobbies and, and things that, that make us happy so we can continue, continuously fill that cup that re-energizes us, recharges us yeah. so that we can go back and, and deliver that level of customer service in your case um, and, and run a business the way that uh, we can maximize that opportunity. So Dan, when you're not working on or in your business and you're outside of that, what, what do you like to do for fun? Fishing, <laughs> fishing, musky fishing specifically, uh, pickerel fishing, bass fishing. Grew up in the Corthas, and uh, my youngest of four is an avid outdoorsman, and the others like fishing too. So every chance we get, um, two of mine are big into golf, and I'm just awful at golf. So I like to get out when I can. I'm going to get to about hole number 12 or 13. I've kind of had enough. But whatever it is about the water and uh, and the act or the art of fishing or whatever, or the, 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 the just the water, um, I don't know. That's, that's my, outside of family, of course, um, I love getting together with family and uh, most of them are within the province one way out west, but um, uh, that's my go-to thing. I really enjoy it. It's peaceful. It's quiet. You you get a chance to think and breathe and and, and just take a breath yeah. and catch a few. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Uh, I am a big fisherman as well. Uh, my dad, uh, I grew up on the boat pretty much. So uh, I've only caught, I think I've only ever caught one muskie in my life, but that is one hell of a fight yeah. uh, to catch a bit uh, a fish that size. Um, and then uh, we've, we've, we fished, uh, we fished primarily on Lake Del Rempel, just east of Aurelia. It's not oh. too far kind of getting into the court as I grew up fishing on that lake. Yeah. Uh, it's a little overfished now and um, the water's too warm, really overgrown in the weeds. I went fishing there uh, last year. I know all the spots like the back of my hand. I, I had trouble catching anything other than pike there, but yeah. uh, bass and pickerel fishing for sure on the top of my list. Uh, I'll tell you uh, one of my coolest stories. I ever had and when I see I'll, I'll show you a couple of pictures uh, my dad and I went with a group of guys we had four boats eight guys and we went up to Timmins and to do some 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 pickerel fishing out there uh, we had a gentleman who had friends who had a had a cottage there uh, I can't remember the name of the lake that we started on but day one we went out there and we worked that lake from like six o'clock in the morning till about four o'clock in the afternoon everybody got a big goose egg <laughs> so we were coming back and day one was okay we're gonna cook some steaks and have a nice meal and have some beers and stuff like that so we were kind of doing that and these two french guys showed up at uh at the cabin they were looking for the guy who owned who owned the place they were really really close friends so myself and another gentleman we, we i speak french i'm fluent in french so we went and spoke to them and uh, we told them how kind of bit of disappointed that we were and obviously that, you know, they didn't know that their, their buddy was coming up that weekend. So we brought them in and invited them in for a steak dinner and we just kind of, you know, shot the ship with them for a bit. And then they just looked around and said, you guys want to go on an adventure? And we're like, yeah, that's why we drove almost 10 hours north was, yeah, we want an adventure. So they're like, okay, gear up at 530 in the morning. We're going to take you. So we took a, about an hour drive from there on this crazy roads, uh, back, left, right, center, the whole bit. And all of a sudden you take a, take a Larry and boom, you're right there in a Crick. It's gotta be, you know, I'd say the Crick's probably 15 feet wide. So a pretty decent sized Crick. And then we launched all the boats. We went down, not even four minutes and then took a right down a Creek that was just about the size of, of our boats. And we had to break four beaver dams to get up and over. Yeah. 
want to do a dock, you yeah. know, where yeah. you're having to keep lifting. And then two more portages. And we got into a lake called Lake Cree, middle of nowhere. It's the only way you can get in. And we had a fishing experience of our lives. We went back twice uh, after that because we remembered right. how to get back there. And one of the fondest and coolest memories of fishing because the adventure component to it. Uh, but then, you know, catching, you know, an unlimited amount of fish because no one ever fishes there. It was just a really, really oh, very good, very good. <laughs> so in, in life, we, 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 we pick a path, right. And, and, and for, for most people have been on, on multiple of them. Uh, you pick something that you think is, you know, good for you based on your goals, based on your dreams, who you are as a human being, what you want in life. And then life kind of decides to get in the way sometimes. Sometimes it's a little bit more on the tragic side. Uh, other times it's life challenges that we go through, ordinary stuff um, and hardships, things like that. Uh, but what's always uh, impressed me is the resiliency of human beings and how we're always able to somehow get past that because we have to move forward. But finding ways on how to do that, obviously everybody has their different coping mechanisms, but really seeing the glass half full, finding silver linings out of things and uh, trying to remain positive. So I'm, I'm curious to ask if you've ever experienced a hardship in life, a life challenge that uh, maybe you overcame, maybe it made you better, maybe it made you stronger, maybe some silver linings from that. Uh, uh, I wasn't going to, but uh, I lost my dad. In 1975, <laughs> uh, that was known as my mom and four kids. Take your time. And uh, you just, you never ever get over it. Like you just, it, you never get over it, but um, if I had to pick one thing, that would definitely be it. And as far as making you stronger, I mean, <clears throat> it definitely changed changed the world, right? For sure. So that would be. Uh, I mean, there's been other things. Most, mostly health related in families or whatever. Uh, thankfully, we had a very good family, which uh, was very helpful. But it sure, uh, it sure changes the world, and it sure makes you grow up. And I always tell people, uh, you know, people lose their mom and their that dad or their grandpa or grandma or close somebody close to them. <clears throat> Normally, not that early in your life, but I always say, you know, just be thankful for the years you did have. Hundred percent. Thank you. For so sorry. <laughs> at my uh, yeah. Uh, well, hopefully you can understand. It is. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm done with that now. Uh, even all these years later, if you think 1975, uh, 11 years old. Like I say, my mom left with four four of us. I was the second oldest on that old farm out in Boulder Road. <laughs> well, it's definitely. Uh, Definitely a tough one. So, yeah, that was my my biggest. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, it does. You know what? You know, Sean, you never know. And another thing I think, and I don't mean to interrupt at all, but uh, just thinking about it now, like there's some we deal with people for a variety of reasons. And it's um, you never one. We never you never know what somebody is going through in their inside right and that's part of not not to go back to business at this moment but you know in any aspect of our life you don't know what somebody else is dealing with or may have dealt with and how recent it may have been and we just need to just be good to people yeah everybody's got something going on and you know we talked about it before the show everybody puts that shield up and you know sometimes you're you're dealing with a customer or you meet somebody in the grocery store and even uh, could be at a red light you know and somebody's kind of acting out a little bit yeah, yeah, to, yeah take a take an extra second before um you know let greater greater heads prevail and say hey you know what they're probably going through something 
yeah. uh, at the moment and uh, you know could be even things that are still uh, you know coming down the pipeline from covid right businesses are still trying to crawl back from that yeah um, you know or a recent loss in the family uh our people's mental states are not what they used to be or wasn't as well known as it is in today's day and age so you never yeah. really know what 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 someone's kind of going through from from that perspective no that's for sure that's for sure i uh i went through my biggest challenge of my life in to, uh in uh, just shortly after covid 2021 um i was a, a sales director for an automotive marketing firm and we had we had done very well. I'd worked there for nine years at that point, uh, or eight at the time. I still worked for another year after, but working hard for nine years and watching COVID rip it apart. The uh, microchip plants in Taiwan, it, it being the one of three and the largest distributor of microchips, uh, automotive dealers didn't really need our help at retaining clients anymore because the demand was so high for the cars and supply was so low. Um, you know, I just watched everything I built uh, and then watch that financial decline from oh, there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was, I was making really good money. So, um, you know, having, having a house and having other responsibilities. And at the time I, I was single. So there, there was that, I think a little bit more pressure, obviously, if I, if I have a, had a family, like I do now, I inherited a 17 year old daughter Congratulations. Uh, and, uh, and my future, uh, I'll call her my future wife. Cause at some point I already know in my bones, I'm going to ask her, but, um, a really, really, really tough time, super humbling experience. Um, and I'm really lucky I had my, uh, my, my mom and dad to kind of help support me through, uh, through that process. But, uh, that was, that was a crazy time to, to go through that. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about not sweating the small stuff. Um, some things I used to care about or hold in a higher regard. I don't, um, I like to think it maybe made me a better person. Um, because of some of that humbling, those humbling experiences, I care a lot more about other things that I think are a little bit more meaningful in life than maybe some of the superficial stuff. Right. Um, so I've kind of come a long way at, you know, what I thought I was growing up. I, and I think I'm a lot more grown up now, just in the right. last couple of years and then, and had a chance to build a business and, uh, and watch it grow uh, successfully. And then making my partnership with Jeff, it's, uh, you look back on it now and uh, try to find some silver lining from that. I can find a bunch of silver linings from that. Good so. Stuff. Good stuff. And sometimes you got to look for them. <laughs> no, hundred percent. That's, that's yeah. one way to move forward. Right. Yeah. So what's, uh, what's one thing that you wish our listeners knew about your business? Oh, I just, I would like them all to know that we truly, truly are. So this is back to business. I mean, we truly are the movers who care. It may sound cliche. It is part of our, our slogan, if you will, but, we truly do care about our customers. And if they could know that, that it's not just another number, it's not just another move. Um, we, we, we truly are the movers who care. We do care about them and we do care about their belongings. And I think if I had, you know, I don't know how I would put it any other way, if, I, if they could just know that. And I do believe once they become our customer and we, you know, perform a move or, or a service for them, they do know it. Um, but, I wish they all could know that. Well, that's very well said. I mean, we talked a little bit about it earlier in the show. If you're going to go buy from a business, whether that be a product or a service, and they take really good care of you, and you know that they care about you, and you get to feel that experience, that goes a long way in people's mind. Every, we're human beings. We want to be appreciated. Uh, and there's, there's businesses out there that unfortunately don't kind of understand that concept uh, as well as some others. Uh, it definitely seems uh, like you and two men in a truck uh, very much understand that concept. Uh, and so super, super happy to have you on the show. I know there's definitely some people who are interested or are going to want to know a little bit more about you guys. And so for those who are, what's one of the best ways that they can get a hold of you? Uh, we're located at 106 Saunders Road, right in behind Costco. You can find us uh, very easily. Our, our office number you can find online, 705-720-2636. Or, of course, at 2 minute it's pretty, pretty, we're not hard to find for sure. 
We will definitely have to do this again. Uh, absolutely love the conversation. Uh, Dan, you're a great human being, a great company, uh, and a great conversation. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show and doing this, and uh, looking forward to hopefully doing this down the line. Sean, the pleasure was all mine. Thank you very kindly. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Midhurst. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpmidhurst.com. That's gnpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.